Yep, and eight days after the midterms, it's official. Republicans uh, gaining control of the House. Democrats still in charge uh, of the Senate. At least, uh, looks like uh, 50, 49, could be 50, 50, but that would bring uh, Vice President uh, Harris uh, back into the mix. What kind of uh, climate will businesses face over the next two years, both on regulations and taxes? Joining us now to talk about that, Louisiana GOP Senator Bill Cassidy. So, Senator, it's great to have you on. And by definition, uh, we're trying to figure out what we can do about inflation. It, 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 not the Fed, but uh, Congress, the Senate, uh, the White House. And it, it's, it's intractable. It's very difficult. Do you think, by definition, with a split Congress, that that will help inflation because there won't be any more spending? Or do you not tie inflation uh, to some of the spending we've seen for the past couple of years? Yeah, clearly inflation has been related to the spending. Not just things like the American Relief Plan, $1.9 trillion pumped into the economy, but what it was spent upon. For example, extending unemployment um, uh, benefits for those who chose not to work, therefore creating artificially a manpower shortage in the workforce constraining the ability to provide services. But I do see, I, I tend to be optimistic. And I think the American people want to see something positive happen over the next two years. Republicans will shut down wasteful spending. That's good. That's positive. I also think divided government gives the opportunity to work on things like Social Security and Medicare, both of which are going insolvent, will contribute dramatically to our, to our nation's debt and deficit. Uh, if we can address that, that would be positive. That works best in divided government where people can't demagogue it. We've seen uh, in both houses uh, some of the more uh, conservative members in, in the Senate and, and in the House. We, we saw a little bit of a kerfuffle with uh, Senator Scott and uh, Senator McCon Leader McConnell, and, and obviously he, it looks like he's going to prevail. The Freedom Caucus in the House uh, making some rumblings. Do you, do you expect uh, debt ceiling problems? Do you expect uh, the, the, the more, I don't, I don't want to characterize them as, as uh, extreme, but, but just say people that have not liked the, the, the spending that we've seen. Do you think they'll go nuclear, go scorched earth on things like that uh, in terms of debt ceilings in, in any spending? Well, a couple things. The debt ceiling will ultimately be raised. We know that from history. Democrats may choose to do it in this kind of lame duck session. But keep in mind that, lay, that, that debt ceiling negotiations have brought about some of the most important deficit reduction activity that we've seen. The Budget Control Act, as one example, which Mitch McConnell negotiated. So, so it'll, it'll get. The debt ceiling is going to be raised. Whether I vote for it or not, it's going to be raised. That's just history. But it also can be a catalyst for kind of a, a uh, let's what, let's get our, our fiscal house somewhat in order. So I don't view that as negative. I view that as a positive. Do you, uh, at, at this point, sir, see any actual legislation or just the lack of legislation is, uh, is going to be maybe what the economy ordered? Is there anything we can do proactively? What about energy? Anything that, that Republicans uh, just controlling the House can do about energy? I think there is a possibility of a grand bargain on energy. Um, right now, for example, I I'm concerned that our environmental regulations, which I strongly support, almost all of them, are, are basically lowering the cost of production in China and India and Asia elsewhere, and therefore incenting companies to move operations. I can give anecdotes that prove that point. Is there legislation that both sides can agree upon that would basically level the playing field? Hey, if you want to move to China, that's fine, but you're not going to benefit by by bringing your goods back here, taking advantage of their lower cost of production because they ignore environmental regulations. I'd like to think both sides can come together on that. And frankly, I've been speaking with both sides. I think there's an appetite for that. Senator, um, we're, you saw the developments of the week. It, it's uh, thrust FTX and Sam Bankman fried into the, uh, into the news. There's this perception that he was the second biggest uh, uh, fundraiser for the Democrats. But you, he, he, he contributed uh, to you as well, and I'm sure there were other Republicans uh, that, that he contributed uh, to. But it, are you the, the exception to the rule, or were, how did that happen, and what are you gonna, are you gonna do anything? Are you gonna give it back, or give it, uh, go somewhere else with it? How are you gonna handle that? 
<laughs> you know, I was talking to my wife about that this morning. And, and I think what other other folks have been doing have been contributing the funds that they receive from this gentleman to charity. Uh, I'll probably give it to the Salvation Army here in Louisiana. They've got incredible programs for the homeless, uh, incredible programs for, for those who uh, are, are broken, if you will, a drug addiction, et cetera, trying to restore them to wholeness. It's a great charity. Let's take something which is obviously a terrible negative, but do something positive with it. Senator, did, he, did you ever meet with him, speak with him? You know, we were at a table together once. I, I remember seeing him, but I can't really say we conversed. It was a, a, a larger group of people. Has your view about crypto changed? Was, did he have any influence over it? And, and I, I will say, and I remember, going, I was going back to look, because when Al, El Salvador adopted Bitcoin, you came out with some pretty harsh words about all this and, and suggested effectively that the United States should be, be worried about trying to combat money laundering and, and preserve the role of the, the, the dollar. Yeah, so, I, so I'm not going to say this entirely taints crypto. Uh, Bitcoin is a separate category of crypto than what this gentleman uh, uh, was using. I can imagine that Bitcoin might be the last person standing, and I, and I know this not from my own base of knowledge, but from speaking to those who are knowledgeable. Cynthia Lummis, the senator from Wyoming, is an expert on all this. And so, and so, so I think there's a future for it. The markets will decide. But clearly, clearly, uh, folks have gone into this kind of with eyes wide, eyes closely shut, ignoring some fundamentals beneath it. And that's not the way you should enter into any business transaction. You, uh, when asked about 2024, uh, Senator, you said we need a candidate. Uh, that looks to the future, and that's kind of like code, or or that just means someone besides uh, former President Trump. Uh, am I reading that right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it speaks for itself, right? If all you're doing is speaking about two years past, um, uh, you're not speaking about the future. And the American people want an agenda which meets their needs. The American people want their leaders to speak about them and not about themselves. Uh, so, so the fact that you see that as code. I think kind of makes it clear that there are some candidates for whom they're not talking about the future, and then they're, they're only talking about themselves. I'm about the future. I'm about speaking to the constituent. I think that's where successful candidates will be. Must be some hand wringing in in the back rooms of of uh, maybe you haven't. It will start if it hasn't yet. But you're going to need the people that love uh, former President Trump. Uh, Republicans are going to need them. Do, do you foresee? Uh, the president, former president, finally, at some point, if it were to go what, the way that you're forecasting, do you see him finally being part of the solution rather than part of the problem? Would he play spoiler if, if uh, it looks like some, another candidate is, is going to get the nomination? You know, anyone that thinks that they can predict what former President Trump is going to do, um, you know, don't, don't talk to them. Uh, uh, but regarding those, those American voters that are concerned about, you know, that like President Trump, if you look about it, their concerns are, are how is their life going to be better? They are fearful that a life which has brought prosperity now brings prosperity to others, but not to them. I don't think former President Trump is the only person that can speak to that. And I also think that if Congress and Republicans are positive in putting forward an agenda which speaks to their needs, then, then, then Republicans have a chance to win in 2024 and do very well. That's our goal. That's our challenge. That's what I'm trying to do. What are their needs? Speak to them, and then we'll see who they decide to vote for. Why does everyone want to be governor of Louisiana so much? <laughs> it's a great state, brother. You should come down here, and I'll take you to New Orleans first, but many other places as well. Can we have uh, crawfish? I love those little, uh, the, the way those things are. Have you had those? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we can have crawfish. We can have alligator. We can have anything you want. Gumbo. But there's nothing better than Louisiana cooking. Have you done that? Suck the brains out? On the end. Oh, well, it's not the you brains, do. but you do suck the head. Okay, it's got the, the fat in there with all the juice. Oh, if you've never sucked the head of a coffee. It's got the old bay oh, in there. Yeah. <laughs> might might be, have some, uh, be able to hear some good music, I think, uh, down there. I haven't been. I need to do that. Um, well, good luck, uh, Senator, and uh, so much to talk about. And, uh, we hope to have you back and, and talk more at some point in the future. A lot Thank going you. on. Funny, isn't it, with politics? Lot, it seems like there's always a lot going on. Thanks. Yeah, it's a game of kings. <laughs> Game of Thrones, right? Yeah. When